shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord knows the way of the just, but the way of the wicked perish.
I like to believe that there are some here who are not Catholics. Am I right? I don't want you to say yes or no, but I would like to thank God for the presence of the non-Catholics for accepting to come to the Catholic University of Ghana. And I hope and pray that your presence in this institution will add to what a university is supposed to stand for. A place where there is a confluence of religious beliefs, philosophical ideologies, and all of it, but definitely this remains a Catholic university. And I'd like to thank those priests and chaplains, the religious personalities, whose physical presence and apparel speaks of the fact that this is a Catholic university college. And we would like that to be a very strong mark of this institution. We are not using it for proselytism, no. We are letting our lives shine as you have it. Sciencie ac sapientie lumen splendiat. And therefore, we hope to let our light shine. And the light of the Catholic faith very much. We are proud of and we are not at all apologetic about it. And I don't expect the Catholics to be apologetic about it, nor do I expect the non-Catholics to feel in any way intimidated about it. A university is an environment where you are open-minded and you can learn from each other. Thank you very much. Having said that, a little query. Is that the choir? And is that the choir? Where are the boys? <laughs> Three and a half. <laughs> ah. uh, I get worried these days. I do get worried. The priests who are here, take it from me. I get worried. These young women are supposed to marry men, oh. <laughs> not souls, not wood. I mean, the young men, the young men, are you there? <laughs> Why are you not confident at all with joining the choir? Who has to coax you to join the choir? That is why you get closer to them. <laughs> and I'm by the way. <laughs> I am a Catholic priest, 46 years in the priesthood. And when I was a student, whenever we went for YCS meeting, young Christian students, and Pax Romana meetings, I love to sit with the young ladies, especially at the dining hall. Because in those days, they were watching their finger. I mean, they were watching their finger. So they didn't eat much. So we, the boys who sat close to the lady, we left the dining hall well taken care of. And it began with singing with them. So when you get to the hostel, get closer to. Otherwise, you will eat curry and groundnuts for the rest of your life. You people don't know how to invest. The boys, the boys, invest, invest. 
It's a serious investment. It's very Anyway, the ladies, I would like some of you two to become sisters. We are waiting for the first graduates from the university, Catholic University of here to go and become a sister. Already we have. How about the priest? Not yet. <laughs> they are in the pipeline. The pipeline is very long. I just wanted to bring it home to you and me so that you do have. I thought so. Well, somebody said he had the pipeline, so I don't know which is which. They should come out of the pipeline. <laughs> anyway, we are not here to say yes or no. I just want you to know that even Catholic education also shows its fruitfulness by as they say, by their fruits, you shall know them. Okay. So if we get priests, we get sisters, we get ministers, we get lawyers, we get judges, we get politicians, we get traditional leaders, we get soldiers, we get security service personnel, then it means we are getting there. I hope you understand that. So I didn't say it just to be proselytistic. Anyway, as Catholics at every Holy Mass, the Church offers us readings from the Holy Bible to help us reflect a little and to take home something for spiritual development. Today's first reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Father, did you take the lectionary? Hey, can you imagine? <laughs> Yours was to read, mine is to explain. And we are making the book and we are giving it to us. In the university, if you don't quote from the Bible, you get into trouble. <laughs> so the first reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 8 to 25. And dearly beloved, St. Paul. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is inviting you and me to identify two things, what we call the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit. And St. Paul makes it clear that if we give in to the desires of the flesh, they will lead us to destruction and ultimately to eternal damnation. However, if we are led by the Spirit of God, that will lead to peaceful living and eternal reward in heaven. So those are the two things, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the Spirit. And St. Paul goes on to say that the desires of the flesh are plain and they are easy to identify. What are the works of the flesh? Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, Jealousy, anger, selfishness, dissension, party spirit, which is partisan spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like, which means it's interminable. My sons and my daughters, when we look at these vices that St. Paul enumerates is difficult in the presence of God to say we are not guilty. It's difficult to say this. And he goes on to say, I warn you, as I warned you before, 
that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So my sons and my daughters, let us listen to what St. Paul is telling us. But he goes on to say, these desires only bring human beings to ruin. Again, St. Paul teaches. You see, St. Paul is not only condemning, he is also exhorting positively. He teaches us that the works of the Spirit of God are, and I quote, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So, St. Paul tells us what to look for, what to hope for, what to work for. The virtues that St. Paul enunciates are very, you know, something that should attract us. Who does not like love? Joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self -control. And St. Paul will say, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. My sons and my daughters, it is my hope and prayer that you will all know that the true goal of education and the true type of formation that Catholic education recommends and also helps to attain are the fruits of the Spirit. It is my hope and prayer that as you are here, you will make it a hallmark of this university to live and walk in the Spirit. I know how challenging, how difficult it is. God did not promise it will be easy. But those who strive are the ones who would reach the end. In today's Gospel too, Jesus Christ teaches us to eschew hypocrisy. Maybe the best description of hypocrisy without getting into the long Greek explanation. The best description is what Jesus said, and I quote, Woe to you, for you are like graves which are not seen, and men walk over them without knowing it. Have you seen the inside of a grave before? Skeleton, bones, a jewel. How many people think that by tithing the Lord forgives them their sins, and they go robbing other people and so on and so on? How many of us think that by living immoral life and then we come to church and we give back money, we are okay at the rest? Jesus is saying, do one and do the other also. The teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ is that we should not live the demands of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, but we must strive for the fruits of the Spirit. Dear beloved, let me bring my reflection to a close and say that as staff and students of the Catholic University, where your motto is Scientiae Ac Sapientiae Lumen Splendia, may the light of knowledge and wisdom shine forth. I hope and pray that you will make every effort 
to live and walk in the spirit of Jesus Christ. And only by so doing, I think your passing through this institution would have meant the institution also pass through you. Your passing through this institution should not only be that you pass and you are gone, but that the institution also pass through you. So we will meditate silently for a while. Then we shall thank God the staff for the governing council. We shall thank God for all those who work to really let the light of wisdom and knowledge shine on this hill. And those of you who are here, may you take that light wherever you go. Be good ambassadors of this Catholic University that has been changed. Amen. Amen. Those who are sick, 
We pray that God will heal them. God will touch them wherever they are. Those who need going through the daily activities, we pray that God will provide for them. Bible says the lonely one called, and the Lord hears their cry. We are praying that God will provide for each and every one of us our needs, our wants, whatever that we desire. For this, we pray to the Lord.
may make these gifts pleasing to you and their humility commanded them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers, pray, my dear sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name. God, good and good of all his solutions. God be with you. Lift up your heart. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit you come, unfailingly to her aid, so that with her heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy through Christ who is our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You may sit and participate in prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the cause of all holiness. The holy therefore this gift we pray by setting down your spirit upon them like a beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Jesus. And the time he was betrayed and entered looking into his passion. Jesus took bread and gave it thanks, broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be made. Lord, your 
wheelchair, it was great to run the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to get her friends in the mighty Remember, also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the of the resurrection, died in your person. Come to the light of your face. And our person, let's all we pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Execute her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son Jesus Christ. And so we make our prayer to Christ and the Christ and the Christ. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. He called us to call God Father and He gave us the Spirit that Christ in us after our Father. And so we dare to pray.
the Vice Chancellor Management of Badobo Institution, teaching and non teaching staff, the alumni present, invited guests are cherished students, all protocols duly observed. It is with singular honor that we, the alumni caucus of CUG Pasqua, wish to share in the joy of our uniquely university, the joy that the uniquely university has chosen, that is the charter acquisition. We acknowledge the unrelenting efforts that leadership and staff have followed to achieve this great feat. The alumni say, There is a beautiful statement that is attributed to St. Augustine that says, He who sings, prays twice. The Pasqua since its inception from September 2009 had performed at various school programs and functions, such as the graduation and matriculation, opening masses, Sunday masses, attending various outreach programs for our fest, Easter and Christmas concerts among others. It is noteworthy that these melodious renditions by the choir have brought joy, relieved burdens, and unlocked the gates of heaven for hearts requests to be answered. For music, they say, is the wine that fills the cup of silence. The people of God occasionally, the past alumni, receive requests from the current choirs, and we have wholeheartedly assisted each year group. This year, through the leadership, we receive a request that they would want to buy an organ and a combo. The total amount was 12500 
society where we hardly ever say thank you, nor do we say commendation for good work done. And I think we will have to reverse it. Too many criticism, too little commendation. You know, and so the staff, the chaplains, I don't want my beret to you to say that for the Pax alumni to have thought of giving you such a gift, I'd like to encourage those of you who are here, who are one day also going to become alumni. Let me give you a trick of how to build that channel. Sometimes we all look at, when you sit down, you quantify, it will be in some millions of, you know, Ghanaian cities, so we panic. At least I have one church somewhere where I told the parishioners, you make it a point that every month you give one block for the church building. That's your contribution. So I like you, the alumni, to find out how much does a single block cost per year. And make it a point that I will contribute to this university that has made me who I am. At least one block per month for the chapel. And start putting it together. And as soon as you get by the cement and immediately start making the blocks, you'll be surprised at how gradually it will be successful. And I like to add another technique. Many of you know this thing, isn't it? Every student has one. How many CDs do you charge per week? Or per month? Make a contract with the Lord God that you will give him a tithe of every month, a tithe. So if I spend 100 CDs per month, or 10 CDs per month. I'm going to give God one CD every month for the chapel. You'll be surprised at how much it can be done. I'm leaving it to you for your ingenuity. You, the chaplains, think about it. If the chapel is something that is so much on your heart, I am sure we can do that. And apart from that, other fundraising projects can be done in such simple ways that gradually we will make it. Because if you sit and you calculate the whole thing, you would start. The longest journey begins with one step. So in the building, no matter how big, it begins with one block. Let us do something. So my sons, and I like to believe not only my sons, but in my daughters, you have given me something to think about. I will talk to my alumni wherever I am that they go to this you know, university at least one block for the Lord. Thank you. Indeed, your grace, we are 
very grateful and we say God bless you for your kind gesture. We are also grateful to our Lord Bishop, Most Reverend Matthew President B, our Lady, our Bishop of this noble diocese, Syrian diocese, and also the acting chairman of the board of directors of this noble university. Your Lordship, we want to use this medium to express our profound thanks to you for all that you have done for us. You have always proven to be and to show us the love of the Father whenever we approach you. We can't say that for granted and we say thank you so much. Our friends also go to our selfless vice chancellor, who is in the person of Professor Daniel Mobin Kukuri. That you be sincerely appreciate your sacrifices, hard work. And most importantly, the key role you play in aiding us attain the presidential <laughs> You all were with me that our new chaplain is it's not even very two months since he started away. The father has been very wonderful. So Reverend Father Stephen Jehovah. We thank you for your guidance, your direction, your support, and your support. So what is happening in this situation? Father, we say thank you. To all present, the list is long. I can't mention all. But from our hearts and from the bottom of our hearts, we love you so much and we say thank you so much. We are very grateful. We also appreciate the effort of all the deeds of the various the age all this. In fact, we are we are indebted to you. We say thank you so much for everything. Nanana, who are here with us, we thank you so much for your support. And then for the land given us to build our local university. We are very grateful. 